traders, they, they lack the understanding of the ego. They lack the understanding of being self-aware mm -hmm. because the being self-aware is a skill in itself. Just like going to the gym, trying to, you know, get big chests, get some big, get big arms, etc., get your six pack. So self-awareness is a muscle mm -hmm. and it requires a lot of consistent practice. Oh, you, you got to trade without, em without emotion. You know, you got to kill the emotion. You got to be like a machine, like a robot. But in fact, it's quite the opposite. So what would you say to someone who is struggling with their ego? Is there like a process to go through to be able to kind of get out of that way of thinking when it comes to your ego? Yeah, there's quite a few things. And I mean, the, those listening are not going to like my answer. What would you advise to the people that are on social media looking for the value? What do they need to look out for when it comes to these people that are posting massive payouts? How can you tell the difference between someone who has just had luck or someone who has, has experience in the market and can provide you the value that you need to not get fucked over mm. by these gurus? Hey guys and welcome back to Trading 101 and today we have something a little different. We are doing an interview for our Trading 101 series. So our first guest is none other than Trader Performance Coach Rodrigo who you all may know who is also a speaker at FX Connect and we're really close with him and we thought it would be great to get him on Trading 101 to talk to you guys a little bit about psychology, mindset, and how that kind of relates to prop firms. So yes, Rodrigo, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us all a bit about what you do? Okay, thank you, Mads. So my name's Rodrigo Antonio, and I'm a performance coach. So I've been trading uh, for about nine years now, mm -hmm. almost 10 years, coming up to it in October. And um, so I've been, pretty much day trading since day one. And I started off my journey already knowing that this was a mental game. So even though my first four years, I didn't quite make money, uh, I was working on my mental edge from day one. Uh, and so four years in was when I got an opportunity to work on a trading floor in London. Mm -hmm. And that's when things really started to take off in my trading. Uh, I was getting mentorship from professional traders, um, started, uh, in managing my own capital uh, within the firm. And it was being surrounded by other traders where I really understood how to use technical analysis properly with the right methods. But then when I started using my mental processing tools to make decisions, to manage my stress levels, it was just a perfect combination. And then I heard about props. So this was in 2019, I got funded with CD Traders Imperium. And then from then I became one of their top traders. And they asked me to help other traders because they noticed that I'm really into my psychology. Having a background in psychology really helped. So I studied psychology in university. So when I started working with traders in groups, I, I was holding live streams or showing people how, to, how I trade, but mostly giving them that accountability that's when I fell in love with coaching itself. And that's when really I started performance coaching, doing one-on-ones, helping traders go from four figures to five figures, five figures to six figures. And as you know, tr helping traders go from six figures to seven figures. Uh, so my next target is to get, get the traders out on seven figures to eight figures. Uh, so for me, it's, uh, it's a big passion of mine and uh, it's something that I want to continue doing because it's just, yeah, it gives me a lot of fulfillment helping other traders because mm -hmm. it's really tough. Trading is, is tough. Mm -hmm. um, and now with the rise of the of prop firms, it's become really attractive to become a trader. Um, however, there's a big problem. And that is that traders don't possess the mental tools in order to become consistently profitable. And that's why the stats show how unprofitable traders really are. Uh, and so hopefully today we can touch on the topics as to you know why they're struggling, what solutions are there, uh, because otherwise, I mean, where are traders gonna get information from? 
but these kind of podcasts, these mm -hmm. conversations. So I appreciate being here. Absolutely, we're so glad to have you here. Obviously, this is what you do mm. on a day-to-day -day basis. You are here to help people like us who are traders, who are struggling with that mental aspect. So what would, to kick things off, what is the biggest thing that you see with people that you work with? The biggest thing that pulls people down and kind of holds them back from their potential when it comes to trading? Um, there's several things. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that traders, they, they lack the understanding of the ego. They lack the understanding of being self-aware mm -hmm. because the being self-aware is a skill in itself. Just like going to the gym, trying to, you know, get big chests, get some big, get big arms, etc., get your six pack. So self-awareness is a muscle mm -hmm. and it requires a lot of consistent practice, certain methodologies to, to really increase it and make it more sensitive. But who teaches self-awareness? Like how, like most of our parents, well, I would say most parents from my experience, they don't understand this concept. Um, in school, they, they don't really teach it. Well, when I was in school, they didn't really teach it. Um, my daughter's school, actually, they're starting to teach oh. emotional intelligence and sort of these self-awareness things. So it's, it's starting to pick up a little bit, but traders who are now in their 20s, 30s, 40s, they never had this when, mm -hmm. they, when they were in school. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lack of understanding what the ego is, um, self-awareness, how to how to use emotions as a signal, as an indicator, because you, you, you hear about trading psychology all the time. Oh, you, you got to trade without, em, without emotion. You know, you got to kill the emotion. You got to be like a machine, like a robot. But in fact, it's quite the opposite. The traders that I've worked with and the traders that I coach, the ones who are, they, they've developed that self-awareness and use mental practices on a daily basis uh, to really understand how what they're thinking, what they're feeling during the, you know, before finding the trade set up whilst managing the trade. He also, when the trade is closed, how, how do they feel? The traders that are very hypersensitive towards these thoughts and feelings are the ones that are able to control impulses, impulsive behaviors. And that's what happens with a lot of traders. They, they, they don't understand that all of these negative behaviors that they have are impulsive, which, you know, these are topics that you, you, you have to really put a lot of research and time into. And a lot of the answers are pretty much, everything I know is pretty much in books. But the day in the, the currently, most people don't read. They, they don't bother to pick up a book or an audio book and start actually listening to it because I mean, your average audio book is what, about five hours long? Mm -hmm. Who has five hours when you've got a 30 second reel, right? When you got a 60 second reel, you know, you've got stories that are like 10 seconds. So I see there's a lot of problems right now in, in the prop firm industry because traders just don't possess the tools um, or the skills to make effective decisions about risk management about uh, following their rules with discipline, about having a routine and a process, about surrounding themselves with the right people uh, and, 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 and taming that ego because taming the ego is so, so important. Um, and the, these are just some of the things that I see that there's a big problem in the industry. So, um, I mean, we can talk about what solutions there are for these things. Um, but it's, these are the things that I see as a big problem. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I think I really wanna focus on the ego because I think, like you said, that is a massive problem in this industry. I think honestly, coming into this industry, I think we all have some type of ego. Mm. To have that different level of thinking, which I do believe all traders have a different way of thinking to the greater population. I think we all do come into this having some kind of ego because we want more from life and we expect to get more from life. So I know I can speak personally on that. Like my, I am still on an, a journey with my ego because mm. I've come to understand that I do have a big ego, but I'm also aware of that and understand that that needs to change. 
So what would you say to someone who is struggling with their ego? Is there like a process to go through to be able to kind of get out of that way of thinking when it comes to your ego? Yeah, there's quite a few things. And I mean, th those listening are not gonna like my answer because- This is what we want. <laughs> They're not going to like my Give answer. Give them what they don't want to hear. <laughs> because what, what the ego wants, the ego wants recognition. Yep. The ego wants um, power, influence. And what better place to achieve all these things than social media? So if you're having a problem with ego, it means that your reward system, how you get recognition, how you get, um, I guess, self-esteem, if you get it, if you're if you if you're trying to get that from social media, or trying to compare yourself to others, mm -hmm. then you're already in drawdown. Mm -hmm. You you are already in mental drawdown. You're trying to get to surplus. You're trying to you know have good mental capital, positive mental capital. You want to perform at a high level, yet you're comparing yourself to someone's chapter twenty, chapter one hundred, and and so when that expectation is not met, guess what? Ego gets it throws a tantrum. Ego throws the toys at the pram uh, and, and they go nuts. And so where do they go nuts? On their PL. They start trading the PL. They start trading um, the outcome. Mm -hmm. and, and they judge themselves based on this outcome, based on the PL, based on the money. And they are far from the truth. So the reason why I say those listening to this are not going to like my response is because I, I'm, I'm going to challenge every single one of you to delete your social media, like straight up. If you're not at a point in your trading where, <laughs> if you're not at a point in your trading where you're, uh, where you're consistently profitable, you're disciplined, then what are you doing on social media but wasting time comparing yourself to others, uh, gossiping, trolling, you know, and, and, and there's certain obviously Twitter beef as we all know happening. <laughs> Uh, and it's just like, and then it's just everyone's ego just comes out and it's, it's, it's exacerbated. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to make it as a trade and you want to be a professional, treat this like a professional business. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't see other businesses um, trolling and hating and beefing with their competition on social media, yet traders are doing it as if they're in school. Mm -hmm. they're, they're beefing and they're gossiping and all sorts. And, I'm, and it's getting even worse. Right, so it's about maturity. I think when it comes to understanding the ego, it's like don't give your ego the opportunity uh, to to follow in its immature path into trying to get recognition and comparison through others on social media. Uh, and so, you know, if that hits home for some people, well, make sure it is. Because when I started trading, uh, and when I've seen traders on the up and coming. Um, we didn't have social media like it was today. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, you know, when I started trading, there was barely anybody on, on Instagram. Um, and, and if there was, it's all, you can all, you've always, you can also tell that they've been just from day one selling uh, a lifestyle. That's not trading. And so it's, uh, but those who have joined trading is particularly since the lockdowns, uh, they've, they've entered at a really difficult time because they've, there's a lot of influencers that has, have established themselves as lifestyle traders. And so they're selling this lifestyle that is actually a false lifestyle as a trader. And so you're comparing yourself to these individuals who, uh, are, they might be traders, some of them, but then they, they've already achieved their success. Mm -hmm. They've already achieved the level of success that all they're showing you is the tip of the iceberg. They're not showing you the work that they've put in, the 10, 15, 20 years of, of work and grind, back testing of back and forth, uh, going, learning and, and trial and error, journaling, understanding their thoughts, their feelings. And so all they're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. And that, that's why I, I kinda, kinda feel sorry for, for, for these traders that have come into the industry the last three years. Uh, but that's no excuse because if you now that you're listening to this and you understand that it's actually a mental game, mm -hmm. I challenge you, delete your social media for one month uh, uh, and study your, your journal, study uh, and backtest and see what the difference is in your mood, 
you probably never want to come back to social media. You think to yourself, I don't need that stuff. You know, you find yourself one good mentor, find yourself an active and good trading community that's supportive and, and that's it. Why do you need to be on social media? So that's one of the ways I would say to, to tame the ego, to avoid all this, or getting involved in beef, comparing yourself to others. And so then what happens is when you're, now when that trader is within the trading community, they've got guidance from a mentor. Now they're surrounded by individuals who are taking it seriously. Because when you jo join a really good trading community, you notice that it's very supportive. Mm -hmm. Traders are actually doing the work. They're analyzing the charts. They're implementing the same strategy. Uh, and, 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 and they're having real and good conversations. There's no gossip. And if there is any beef, usually within a few minutes, they're out. If there's any trolls within the community, just they get blocked, they get banned, they get kicked. So these are some of the ways I, I, I feel like traders right now, if, you're, if you want to get into prop, should be understanding and not allowing the ego to just allow social media to influence the ego. But then you can start understanding and now you've got the opportunity to make it, uh, and I guess, spend some time with yourself. And that's where the self-awareness comes in. Because mm -hmm. now you, you've, there's less distraction there's, there's less channels, there's less uh, information. Now, really, what information truly counts? And that's your, your back-tested data, uh, what, your, your trading plan. What counts is your trading journal. How, how are you back-testing? What, what data are you collecting? Uh, you know, what's, what's your uh, max, losses, max conse consecutive losses? What is your average win? How do you usually feel after three or four losses in a row? Uh, how do you usually feel after two or three, four, five wins in a row? You know, do you get euphoric? Do you get really super angry after two, two lo losing trades? At what point do you experience tilt? Mm -hmm. uh, and then so there's this, there's this, all this data and, and research that needs to happen in order for, for a trader to truly understand themselves. And that's just step one. <laughs> there are more steps mm -hmm. okay that makes a lot of sense and I think that is definitely homework for anyone that is watching at home if you can start by deleting that social media I think that is a big step in itself like so we all thrive off of that social media presence especially when it comes to like Twitter and like for people like us who we are there to provide value I think it's it's very much a double-edged sword of we want to be present and be able to provide value but at the same time we need to understand that we can't let the ego get involved and if we're not getting reach or we're not we're not managing to put that value out in let's say the right way at the beginning it can become very hard to take that step back away from actually trading so I think that is great to just get that social media deleted if you are going through a bad period or if you're struggling with the ego in general. Um, but I think that's very hard to do at the same time. It, it is, but you have to make a choice. Do you want to be an influencer or do you want to be a trader? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, and so there's a choice there. Yeah. Now you can, I would ideally, I would recommend become the trader. Yeah. Uh, build a lifestyle uh, uh, and processes and routines uh, and mm -hmm. become consistently profitable. Mm -hmm reinvest those profits into other cash flowing assets yeah. set your family up then if you really want to give back and you want to give value mm -hmm. then obviously step into social media and become an influencer yeah still continue to run your businesses um but if you want to give back then at least you've you're you're already yeah. set but traders want to do the opposite mm -hmm. they want to become the influencer to then become the trader but then they realize hold on a minute i've got to do um 30 reels a month. I got to do, I got to speak to this graphic designer. I got to do this video editing. I got to do this podcast. I got to do all, and where's, where's the back testing? Where's the reviewing your ASR, your advanced self review on the weekends? Uh, how are you getting in sync with the market? And, and you know, it's, it's just, you got to make that choice. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to this and you want to be the trader, then you got to be deleting social media or, or if you're not going to delete it, then follow, I would say, a handful of people and mute the rest mm -hmm. and restrict social media mm -hmm. to just weekends. 
when the market is not open. So then therefore you're not influenced by uh, sh uh, seeing someone else's uh, profits, someone else's lifestyle, uh, uh, payout certificates or payout withdrawals, because that's going to influence your expectation. Now, because you're not there yet, again, ego is going to kick off. Apes, you, you, you go ape shit in, in your head and you're like, I'm not there yet. What's going on? There must be something wrong with me. Or no, there's something wrong with my system. Okay, I need to change it. And then it's just an endless vicious cycle. All because they don't understand the ego mm -hmm. and how exacerbated it becomes, especially when it comes to trading. Because with trading, you have to risk money to make money. But if you don't even understand risk, even from a business one or one point of view, if you don't understand what it is and how to manage a business, uh, you got income expenses, um, uh, profit and loss, uh, and you've got you know ROTI, return of time invested. If you don't understand these sort of concepts, supply and demand. If you don't understand these type of concepts, then in business one on one, how are you supposed to become a professional? prop firm funded trader mm -hmm. because it is a business in the end mm -hmm. and we are professionals absolutely and that's kind of what i'm getting at in the fact that traders are coming onto social media now they've had a bit of a winning streak and they're right like right okay i'm now going to become an influencer but you may not have had the experience in the market to deal with different things and the different type of market cycles you are now coming on social media to try and provide value and teach other people, but you don't have that experience and enough knowledge to be able to do that for people. And I think people are running with their egos when they come onto social media and they've had a few great payouts from prop firms. They can show all this off, gain loads of followers from that because they're showing somewhat of instant gratification. They've had quick look, managed to get a payout or a few payouts in a row and now they're sharing that with everyone and everyone thinks they're the world's greatest trader. Mm. But then it isn't consistent. So they're t showing people all of these different things but then when it comes to actually providing the value, the value is not there because they can't consistently provide the value in times where the market isn't what they're quite used to. So when it comes to the people that are having okay let me word it differently what would you advise to the people that are on social media looking for the value what do they need to look out for when it comes to these people that are posting massive payouts how can you tell the difference between someone who has just had luck or someone who has has experience in the market and can provide you the value that you need to not get fucked over mm. by these gurus uh there's quite a few things that I, I would definitely advise traders uh when it comes to choosing the right mentor or choosing the right influencer to follow mm -hmm. uh i mean there's there's telltale signs and you know for example are they talking about are they are they demonstrating more value when it comes to uh their their, their system their mental processes or are they showing you a, a lifestyle? Are they constantly showing you this lifestyle that they're traveling? They've got these really nice cars, really n nice watches. I mean, what is it that they're actually giving? Um, another thing that traders should be doing is joining their communities, these so-called or influencers or mentor or guru or whatever, and doing your due diligence, like asking other traders, that have taken the program you know what what has been your experience you know the, the with twitter with with fintech these days of uh, and twitter and everything you, you can ask the audience questions you can ask their followers you can easily access other people's followers and just send random questions because if you're going to make a, a big investment uh not just in money but in time you need to do your due diligence mm -hmm. um and one thing that traders need to understand is that there are certain people who are faking everything and there are certain prop firms that give out these marketing accounts and they play around with the numbers so that they look like they are actually making money they're making withdrawals and it's actually all fake and so this is a big problem in the industry and traders don't even realize it yeah. that they get they're, they're getting completely getting fleeced 
And so it is difficult, but there are certain things like, yeah, got join the communities, ask questions, try and get reviews and testimonials, uh, test it out yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, really, it, it comes down to understanding your own personality. And when you, you got, like I said before, you got to treat this like a business and any business interaction that you have with others is essentially a business partnership. So when, when, when you're seeking a partnership, the first thing you should be uh, asking yourself is, do, do my values and principles, uh, are they mirrored in this individual? Do they believe in the same things I believe in? Do they speak my language? Do, you know, do, what are their values when it comes to family? What are their values when it comes to wealth? Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm not interested in, in, have, uh, in buying a Lamborghini uh, I'm, or, or like brand new from the showroom because I know it's a, de it's a depreciating asset. Um, I wouldn't mind uh, an expensive watch because especially if it's a watch that will retain its value. Um, if, but if, 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 uh, if, if an individual is just constantly buying new cars or constantly showing this certain lifestyle, then I'm, straight away I'm like, hold on a minute. They don't really have the values that I have. I'm, I mean, I'm a family man. I love my family. I want to spend time with, is this individual, do they even have children? Mm -hmm. Do you know what, or are they constantly showing this lifestyle of dating multiple women? Which is, I'm not interested in that. Some people are, but I'm not. So for me, I would look, I would do my due diligence uh, and, and, and really ask, do I share the same values and principles as this individual? Because I'm about to do business with them and it's not a, a two month or three month thing. I, I, would, I would follow or I would partner with this individual for years to come. So that's how it should be approached as a, as a business partnership. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree. I think that it, it makes a lot of sense when you talk about you need to go with someone that has the same kind of values as you. Because when it comes to choosing a mentor or someone that you're looking up to and following and want to be like, they have to align with the same purpose that you have in life. Otherwise, mm. you're not going to be able to take the value that you need from them. You need to be able to relate to that person, look up to that person. And that person needs to be someone that you want to be like. You want to replicate that mm -hmm. and be better than, but in your own kind of way, I guess. So that makes a lot of sense for anyone that is actively looking for a mentor, looking for anyone to follow on social media. That is great advice. Um, so going into a little bit of the discipline side of things, mm -hmm. because I think, again, that's something that a lot of traders struggle with and probably is the biggest hurdle to to get over. If you don't naturally have that level of discipline, I know, again, relating that back to myself, discipline has definitely been a big struggle of mine. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I began implementing discipline in a lot of different aspects in my life, did it actually come through for my trading as well. So what advice would you give to someone who is really struggling with that discipline? And yeah, what advice could you give to them in terms of like pulling themselves into being a disciplined trader? I, I think the very act of struggling to be disciplined is a good thing mm -hmm. because it's part of learning. And in order for the brain to learn, it's, it's, it's referred to as in neuroscience as neuroplasticity. And for that to occur, there needs to be a struggle. There needs to be, you're trying to reach or attain a skill or, or do something that is out of your skill or your mm -hmm. experience. And so the very act of trying to be disciplined and you struggle with it is a good thing. Okay. Uh, and so what that also uh, allows you to do is build resilience because now you're, you're trying to wake up on time or you're trying to get to the gym or you're trying to um, follow your trading plan. And it's a struggle because now you've got all of these thoughts and impulses that are making you revenge trade or break your rules and mm -hmm. or you're not waking up on time. And so there's this struggle with discipline and consistency. But then if you're if, if you're not um, actively recording a, a, in a journal what you're actually struggling with, uh, then that's that's gonna, then you're not really gonna know what you're actually struggling with. Which part of the process are you lacking discipline? Because mm -hmm. a lot of traders, most traders, they spend a lot of time on the entry. Uh, and, and because it's, the entry is, I guess, the most. It's that whole sniper entry yeah. phenomenon, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's because it, it, 
it triggers a lot of dopamine. Mm -hmm. And so the entry is like, it has to be a sniper. And, and the, the better the, the minimum drawdown, it's like the better the sniper mm -hmm. entry, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if you ever want a sniper entry, uh, just go on the weekly time frame and it's always going to look like a sniper. <laughs> literally, literally. Um, but when it comes to, um, to, to discipline, it's recognizing which part of the process am I struggling with. And if it's with the exit, then just start to, I would say, record as much information about the exit. Or if it's not even the exit, it's just like managing the trade itself. Mm -hmm. uh, ma the way you manage your break even uh, or the way you scale in. If that's what you're struggling with in, in terms of being consistent, then focus on that. Build some rules that, and then back test those rules. And if you see it works, then forward test those rules and then optimize a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then if you've got uh, a positive expectancy, let's say after 100 reps, 100 trades, and then you see, okay, I've got something here, then you you want to start trading it uh, with live funds. Uh, and, and, and so it's really identifying which part of the process you're struggling with. One thing I do when I work with traders on a one-on-one -on -one basis is um, I, I, there's this tool that I, that I use, which is all about reprogramming and identifying where the strengths and weaknesses are. We begin with the, the weaknesses um, and then we tag which, where this weakness arises. Is it during your pre-market? Is it during when you're managing the trade or is it during the post-trade part of the process? Mm -hmm. And then if it's, let's say for example, um, post trade the issue where, where the issue arises we say okay what part of the post trade what is not happening there and it's usually they're not journaling um and it's usually they are maybe spending too many too much time on the charts perhaps maybe they're spending too much time on social media they're just experiencing a lot of burnout where they might not even get to bed on time so when the trade is closed when the trading session is over then there's you know they might not be getting enough sleep which is then affecting them the next day because they're not rested uh, and so they lose focus. And if you're tired, guess what? Your, 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 your ego is like, it goes nuts because now if, you, if you're hungry, instantly you're in a bad mood. Uh, if, if you take a loss or if you make a mistake, instantly you're, you're, you're even, in, you're, you're, you, you get angry, you get frustrated, and then it's just a spiral effect. Mm -hmm. So it's, th there's, this, there's this connection, interconnectedness between the whole trading process, but yet traders are focused on just the entry, not realizing that there's, like, there's a big part of the entire process. Uh, and so when you have a, a well-balanced process and you have a process within the process for each, it's all written out, then you have a map. You essentially just, uh, you, you have a plan and all you gotta do is trade that plan mm -hmm. as close as possible and you track every single part of it. And this is what I do with traders. Essentially, I just create a plan for every step of the way um, and then assess them and hold them accountable to that uh, because that's what I've done for myself and, I, and that's what is, helps traders really understand that it is about the process. The outcome will take care of itself. It will come as long as you follow the process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why it takes so long to, 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 to establish, establish discipline. Because once you have that process, that it's just, it's just in black and white. It's, 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 a, it's on a piece of paper or on a screen. Now you got to implement it. Because now implementation of it that's where the real struggle is because you, even though you have the entire process and it's all written out, the first few weeks, when I'm work, the first two weeks, I would say when a trader, when I'm working with a trader, they're like, why am I still making the mistakes? I'm like, this is good. Mm -hmm. Like we want to know where are you making the mistake? It's okay to make the mistake. It, me it's, it means that you're, this struggle that you have is part of the learning process. It's part of that neuroplasticity because now where you're creating new neural pathways of the new process, mm -hmm. the new way of doing things. And so then suddenly after th week four, five and six, their default response is not to revenge trade. Their default response is I've taken my two losses for the day, I'm done. And it's just a paradigm shift. 
it's like wow I, I get that feedback all the time it's oh my god i'm i don't i'm even though i feel like i want to revenge i've stopped myself and i'm like this this is the way that's what it's about it's you still experience the fear you still experience the, the anger but then you don't uh you don't submit to the impulse mm -hmm. because now you've you're most you're aware of it you've already done it three four five times in the last few weeks you're not going to do it the fifth time uh because then i'm going to kick your ass <laughs> 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 and so there it's literally or you know that's essentially about building processes is going through that struggle recording it um and then as you continue to build that resilience then mm -hmm. you start noticing wow i'm actually becoming more disciplined now and then this is where the famous 10,000 hours come in right it's not 10,000 hours of strategy hopping it's not 10,000 hours of um trying to figure things out no it's actually 10,000 hours of that process day in day mm -hmm. out rinse and repeat that's where mastery comes from a and so traders are not even getting to that stage they did they're trying to they're trying to take a shortcut to that stage and then they're finding themselves constantly revenge trading constantly strategy hopping constantly trolling and hating and beefing on social media and there's they're still not where they want to be so this i hope this conversation is a reality check mm -hmm. um and it's not the most attractive it's not the most i mean this content will probably doesn't even get that much of a reach uh compared to talking about technical analysis mm -hmm. or about a seven figure trader you know six figure withdrawal those get the views because it's it's about it's, a, it's it's about the cash it's about yeah. the money it's about the outcome these conversations right now this is what it's about mm -hmm. it's this is where these the, the answers lay and this mm -hmm. is this is the process that traders are either they're not aware of or their ego is in the way and they're like oh, forget trading psychology it's all bs i don't need that i don't need that <laughs> i mean i just pay this guy follow what he follow his signals and i'll make money <sighs> if only it was that easy yeah if only it was that easy. I want to actually talk about something that you've just said, which you've said a word that is probably one of my favorite words that I've picked up on, on the last, in the last 10 years of my per personal, personal development journey. And that is the paradigm shift. Mm. So for a lot of people who don't know about like the background of that. So for me, I'm really big on like Bob Proctor, John Canary, those kind of people that re that's where I picked up on that from. So a lot of people that are coming into this world of trading now probably haven't done that psychological personal development journey of the books that we'll also get into as well which is my favorite thing to talk about the books yeah what exactly for those that are at home watching who don't know anything about paradigm and are hearing that word and thinking what is that what is a paradigm and what is that paradigm shift that you always talk about um, hold on, let me chat. Let me ask ChatGBT. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep question. Um, right. So this, this, what I, my understanding of a paradigm shift is essentially completely changing your perspective, a complete change of uh, of belief. So, um, and this, this, this is a, it's a very deep topic, uh, and to be able to change a belief, there's a process to it. Now, the change of a belief it is so powerful in anything that you do, because most a lot of people that are struggling uh, with stress, financial difficulty, uh, emotional management uh, of anxiety, you know, they they have a certain certain beliefs that are holding them back, and some of these beliefs are are so ingrained into their subconscious that they didn't even realize that they have these beliefs. But there are certain beliefs that are established, especially in the first seven years of life. And um, there are beliefs can change over time, but there are certain beliefs that are so buried deep within the subconscious that they start to manifest later on in life. And then there's issues. And then there's uh, these 
people having mm. negative relationships, people can't hold down a job. And so this paradigm, they have a certain way of seeing life. Now, a paradigm shift is, is a change of belief. Uh, and when you, and to change a belief, you're essentially changing um, the emotional charge towards that belief. So you now have a new belief, which has a stronger emotional charge towards it. Now, I mentioned emotional charge because it could be either a positive, emo uh, a neg a positive emotional charge or a negative emotional charge, because you can have a belief because of a negative memory, a mm -hmm. negative experience. But if you, uh, um, if you have a, uh, uh, if you want to change your belief, uh, you need to assess your emotion. You need to think, look back and just try to figure out what kind of childhood you had, certain traumatic experiences, certain positive experiences. So, because when it comes to trading, there are two main powerful emotions. You've got fear and greed. And so as a child, where did you have, where did you experience fear and greed? Where did you experience happiness? Um, and so when you start to realize, hold on a minute, I remember these experiences, now it's manifesting itself. Like I, when I talk to traders and I go, you know, we have these conversations, a lot of these childhood memories come up, these traumatic experiences, and they realize, wow, I'm, I'm angry at the market because I'm angry at that person mm -hmm. that done something to me. And, I'm, and, I'm, I'm, I w I w and I hate that person. And 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 I'm and the market is being personified as this individual, and so there's this process of having to forgive that individual and even forgive yourself for hating that person, and then that's when the paradigm shift happens because now there's no more hate towards that individual. Now, now there is what's replaced it is feelings of forgiveness. So now there's a different emotion. Therefore, the the, the belief has changed then there's this paradigm shift. Now suddenly they're not angry at the market anymore. Now they're more present. And so they're more likely to enter into the flow state because <laughs> now they're focused on the process as opposed to this hatred towards the market, which mm -hmm. is actually someone else in their, in their life. It's deep. But that's I was gonna say, that is very deep. Yeah, but that's that what, I'm, what, in my opinion, what a paradigm shift is, is it's a change of okay. belief. And the way to change your belief is you've got to change the emotion behind that belief, replace it with something positive. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of, of mine. So one thing that was holding me back in my trading, uh, well, and, and, it, and a lot of traders uh, suffer from this, is this uh, lack, lack of having money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you want to be profit, you, you want to become a profitable trader in order to make money. Mm -hmm. uh, however, then you 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 have this outcome bias. You just you're, you're trading just to make money, and this is this is a, a wrong belief. And so for me, I realized I had to change my belief. How can I change my belief about want to make money? Obviously, we want to make money as traders. So then I, I thought I asked myself, right, what do I fear more? Do I fear more failing as a trader, or do I fear more going back to the corporate life, the rat race? And so my my belief then shifted i had a paradigm shift because now my biggest fear is not failing as a trader my biggest fear is going back to being average to being in that corporate life uh, asking for permission to go on holiday yeah. um living paycheck by paycheck just over broke in debt now it's if i don't follow my process if i don't follow my rules I'm gonna go back to that. That's what I fear. So now I'm I'm disciplined because I fear going back to mm -hmm. what what used to be or what 99% of the world is. So it's a it's that's what I believe is a it's a paradigm shift. And every trader needs to go through mm -hmm. these multiple. Actually, it's yeah, not just 100%. one. There's multiple. Yeah, I 100% agree. And like I said, I first learned about the whole paradigm thing about 10 years ago um, through a guy called Bob Proctor who mm. absolute idolise him. But we had this thing when, so I was in a network marketing group when I first heard about it. And in this group, we came up with this thing where because all of us were kind of new to the whole personal development world and the journey and just kind of realising that we wanted more from life. So there was a lot of beliefs that we had as a collective that we had to change. Something that we did, which might be useful for people at home that are watching, 
is if we said something or we had a thought that was what we would call what should be our old way of thinking mm. instantly we would make ourselves conscious of it and we'd be like paradigm paradigm just say paradigm and understand that that is something that you can't you can't think like that anymore that is a type of way of thinking that you you need to change that so yeah. for example if we were to say i can't do that paradigm why are you think you can't you, you can do anything don't use can in your vocabulary mm. just li- little things that we would say that are like the broke way of thinking yeah when you pick up on that say to yourself paradigm that just instantly gives you something to quickly revert back mm-hmm. no okay change that what can i replace that with mm-hmm. so paradigm replace that with something positive or love that a better way of thinking love that is essentially it's it's a mantra it's an affirmation exactly uh, but every time you say it you get this uh, a dopamine a release of dopamine yeah. and then now your reward system is associating this word paradigm to mm-hmm. what you should be doing yeah. and then the more you do it the closer you are um, towards changing that language mm-hmm. or whatever the goal is mm-hmm. right whatever that you're trying to whatever belief or behavior you're trying to change eventually it will get to the point where that's your new normal mm-hmm. you realize oh my god i've done it 100%. I've, i've overcome this i'm no longer doing x i'm no mm-hmm. longer revenge trading i'm no longer closing my trade early yeah i'm no longer taking signals mm-hmm. and then and so when you realize you can do it with one behavior you think to yourself right okay now it's time to change yeah. this this and this mm-hmm. and so that's but like you, the example you just gave it takes time 100%. it takes repetition mm-hmm. uh, and, and so this is this is uh, what traders should understand that there is a process there is time and you got to do and you got to struggle you're going to make those mistakes but then it's having these what it's like a mental stop you, you your mantra was paradigm mm-hmm. like, it's great that you had the accountability because then having accountability accelerates 100% a change of behavior that's that's why my business is thriving because i give traders that accountability mm-hmm. uh so it's about identifying what behaviors are holding you back what is the replacement holding a uh, building a, a program of routine and a process to replace those behaviors and then over a series of 12 weeks, 4 mm-hmm. months because that's usually the time it takes to change behaviors mm-hmm. and beliefs every single day keeping the traders accountable mm-hmm. and then some traders they they don't need 4 months some traders need like 2 or 3 weeks mm-hmm. others need the the full 4 months other traders need 6 months mm-hmm. it, it really depends on everyone as an individual and how they learn how they adapt and how coachable they are yeah. and 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 this is being coachable is essentially humility and if and 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 the and the market if you take it seriously will humble you and if you don't un- if you don't understand um this concept understand really research i would recommend every single one of you understand what humbleness is humility is uh, and when you become a humble trader you're you you're always a student of the market you're always there's always something to learn there's always something to improve and so because there's always something to improve you never settle you're always going to push yourself always striving to become 1% better each and every day and that's what it's about it's a never ending struggle and and so the never ending struggle if you don't have the mindset the growth mindset to to always put yourself in this uncomfortable position of constantly struggling um uh, then trading's not for you and that's that simple yeah i agree 100% what would you say going straight off the back of that what would you recommend to a complete beginner that is coming into this who is not only new to the whole trading journey but is also new to the whole mindset psychology personal development journey where do they start um there is this is there's so so many things that where uh, there's so many things that traders need to do in order to start in the right way but i would say is what we've touched on earlier was is do your due diligence and find a a, a mentor and a community mm-hmm. which um it it's supportive 
uh, and it not just focuses on the strategy itself, but also focuses on the mindset, on the psychology, uh, and 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 getting recommendations for certain books, certain authors. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned some uh, Bob Proctor, which is outside mm -hmm. of trading, but talks about mindset. Mm -hmm. You got um, Tony Robbins. Um, when it comes to trade uh, trading psychologists, uh, then you got Mark Douglas. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Dr. Van Tharp. Dr. Mm -hmm. Brett Steenberger, uh, you have recently uh, Jared Tendler, and and there's there'll be more coming. Uh, 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 there'll be more authors coming. But if you focus on these authors and their work, uh, and read these books, and actually not just read it once, read it several times, make notes, discuss the book with others, explain a chapter to somebody else. Um, you know, these are the th type of things that a trader should be doing. Uh, and if you're gonna find, if you're gonna, um, if you're gonna work with a particular mentor, make sure that they're gonna give you a trading journal. They'll, you know, they'll help you set up a trading plan. Uh, they give you one to ones. You know, these uh, sorts of uh, courses and programs, and there are a few out there. You know, these are the sort of things that you should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and myself, I, I work with traders that already have a strategy and uh, what they're struggling with is just the implementation of it, mm -hmm. of the mental processes of it. So although I don't work with complete novices and, uh, that are just learning the strategy, uh, it gets to the point, they, they will get to the point where they have a strategy, they might need a, a, a bit of tweaking. I mean, that's when I can really help them. Uh, but there are education courses out there that teach the complete basics. You got to know the basics, mm -hmm. but the fastest way to to develop is getting yourself a mentor, listening, implementing, uh, and, and 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 discussing these topics. Getting the accountability not just from the mentor but also from the community itself, um, and understanding that this is a business, just like. You would go and study a degree, mm -hmm. just like you go and study within an apprenticeship. There is a process, uh, and there's there's a, there's levels of mastery, uh, and, and if you trust the process and you you have that humility, uh, you are coachable, and and you embrace the struggle, then uh, you you can actually become a successful trader within the you know the next two to three years. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting off in, 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 if this is still your first year of trading, uh, you should not be thinking, I wanna make X amount of money. You should be thinking, I wanna make X amount of back tests. I wanna have X amount of tr trading journals. I, w I, w I wanna be able to, um, I wanna be able to teach someone else my strategy because that's how well I know it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's understanding um, and having the data. The first year is all about understanding the entire concepts, understanding uh, a strategy itself, because you can learn a strategy in a week, really. It's not that difficult to learn a strategy, but then do you have the data mm -hmm. to, 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 to give you that confidence that you can trade it in the next two, three, four, five years time? That's what it really comes down to. Mm -hmm. 100%, 100%. To finish off there, you mentioned books. What would be the top books that you would recommend outside of trading for someone that is beginning their mindset journey? I would say uh, one book that I actually recommended on the spaces recently mm -hmm. was uh, The Art of Learning by Josh Wadeskin. Mm -hmm. Brilliant book. I haven't heard of that. No. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna recommend add it. that to my Amazon list. So that that's a <laughs> that's a nonfiction. Um, there is a, a a fictional book that I really enjoyed by Paulo Coelho. Um, I think oh, what, what's it called? It's the Alchemist. The Alchemist. Thank you. Yes, The Alchemist. Uh, you've got um, I would say uh, the the my, my mind's gone blank, but the the uh, the science of uh, getting rich. Yes. Get rich. Was it? <laughs> the science of getting rich. Wallace D. Wattles. Okay. Yeah. There's that. My, my mind's gone blank with all the books. 
<laughs> I'm actually currently reading uh, a book about flow. Okay. Uh, so it's called um, Impossible. Um, and there's the same author has written another book put, called Superman. Okay. Um, there are t other books uh, by Tim Ferriss. Yes. Tools of Titans is yes. great. Um, there are, there's just so many books that outside of trading that really encompass and focus on the science of performance. Mm -hmm. That's really where I've just, re I focus my attention mostly on these type of books. So these uh, nonfiction, self-development, they focus on science-backed processes um, that all, are all about it, enhancing performance. That's mm -hmm. really where you, what you want to focus on mm -hmm. uh, if if you want to really master the game of trading. Mm -hmm. I feel like we could do a whole podcast on books. Yeah. Because I absolutely, I don't know if you've seen my book, my yeah. bookcase, my famous bookcase at this point, mm -hmm. but literally all of those that you've spoken about, like absolutely adore. The Alchemist, guys, if you have not read The Alchemist, highly, highly recommend. I know for a lot of people, they struggle to get into like the non-fiction stuff because it is very brutal. Mm. But The Alchemist is, I just think it's such a great, it's a, it's a fable, isn't it? I would say that it's a fable. That story is life changing in itself, mm -hmm. just reading that. And it's only, it's, it's a quite a small book as well. It's not that it's not that hard to digest, but I literally could talk about books all day. I absolutely love books and they have been a huge part of my journey. So I think we should definitely do another episode, just maybe based on books. Yeah. I think we could definitely talk about that all day. Yeah, I'm down. But no, thank you so much for that conversation. Thank you for coming on and being our first in-person interview for Trading 101. This is definitely going to be very beneficial, especially coming from someone who has the psychology, psychology background. You are a trade performance coach, so you literally work with people like us on a daily basis. There is literally no one better that we could have had on. So thank you so much for coming and sitting down with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, of course. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, Rodrigo's socials will be in the description so you can reach out to him if you want his services. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And I will see you again very soon.